Shalom. 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 All praise is honor and glory belongs to Yahweh. Bahashem. Yahushem. Bahashem. Bahashem. Yahweh, being the name of Heavenly Father, Yahweh being the one who the world they want to call God, Bahashem meaning in the name, Yahweh Shai being the name of the Messiah. Uh, Yahweh Shai is the one of the world, even when he calls Jesus, Bahashem meaning in the name, Rakhak Wadash meaning Holy Spirit, Rakhak meaning Spirit, Wadash meaning Holy. So we said all praises to Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles, the great millstone that we will. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. You know, um, I'm going to get some points in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 53. All right, so let's get right into it. I'm going to read. Uh, so this is Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? Got anything you want to add on that? Or anything? Well, yeah, that's going into like what well, that's basically a scripture concerning the disciples, you know, who believed our report. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, the elect are going to be the ones to believe the report. Reset Romans 11 and 7. What then Israel thought obtained that which you seek it for, and what is seeking for the truth? But the election, the elect, hath obtained it, hath obtained the truth, and the rest, the rest of Israel were blinded. So you have it. So who hath believed our report? The elect. And to whom um and to whom is the arm of the of the Lord revealed? And the arm of the Lord is Yahweh Shai. Right. And this right here. Amos chapter three, verse seven. Surely the Lord Yahweh will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. This is up, Salakia. I have a precept. John 12 and verse 37. It says, But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? You know, that's the point on that right there. Verse 39. Therefore, they could not believe because that Isaiah said again, he had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. Right. That's the point that right there. You know, that's pretty self-explanatory. The Lord, if you can't receive it, it's because the Lord blinded you, man. You know, for our gospel we hid, it is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Right. Now, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 2. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. When he hath, it says, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Right. Not going into how, it's not, like I remember Apostle Gabar, he broke this down a while ago. It's not necessarily talking about how Yahweh Shai is ugly. It's saying how he was rejected, like people rejected Yahweh Shai, okay? And I actually have a precept to back that up, why Yahweh Shai isn't ugly, because the scriptures say um, that the Most High, the Lord is the author of beauty, you know? Scriptures say that the Lord is the author of beauty, all right? And I'll get that real quick for edification's sake, all right? And think about it, man. Yahweh Shai, the son of man, Son of the Heavenly Father, you think he's going to be ugly, you know? <laughs> but then again, you know what I'm saying? But let me let me get the precept. Let me let the scriptures talk. Psalms 96 and 6. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Talking about Yahweh Bashem al sanctuary, you know? Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary, okay? Um, you know, so it's really a metaphor. No beauty meaning really a metaphor of how... The Lord was rejected, man. And I also want to get another precept real quick. This is Second Maccabees. And matter of fact, the standard, the standard of beauty is really how a Jacob looks like. All right. Israel is the most uh, you know, um, 
comely people, looks wise, you know. And guess what? Jake is made after the image of Yahweh Bashmiel Shai. Okay, so the point being, what man? Seeing the way a so-called Negro looks like, that's comely. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people find that very comely. So how much more the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son? You know, this is Second Maccabees three and verse twenty-five. It says. For there appeared unto them a horse with a terrible rider upon him, adorned with a very fair covering. And he ran fiercely and smote at Heliodorus with his forefeet. And it seemed that he sat upon the horse, that he that sat upon the horse had a complete harness of gold. All right, so it says that the, it's talking about an angel, but it said he had a fair covering, fair meaning beautiful, you know, so on and so forth. So they, they come in. They're, the beauty of the heavens is really majestic, man. You know, they're very comely. Now, I want to get another precept. I'm going to skip down to verse 26. It says, moreover, two other young men appeared before him, notable in strength, excellent in beauty, and comely in apparel, who stood by him on either side and scourged him continually and gave him many sore stripes. And this is talking about the angels, okay? So that's the point on that right there. You know, the angels, um, like I said, excellent in beauty. <laughs> you know, the angels are handsome, okay? Just like how Yahweh Shai is handsome, you know, or at least I'm presuming, okay, due to the scriptures. You know, you could kind of extrapolate that. But nevertheless, when Apostle Gabar broke it down, he said it was like a metaphor, basically referring to how Yahweh Shai was rejected of men, you know? Nobody, like it says, like scripture says, like you. Oh, you got to go ahead. I was going to say, like the scriptures say, um, he came unto his own and his own received him not. Roughly paraphrasing John, the first chapter. Uh, it's Mark chapter 8, verse 31. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. There you have it. So, you know, he was, you know, so basically the majority of the Lord's uh, own people rejected him. Like the brother was just saying, I'm scripture, John 1, he came into his own and his own, and his own received him not, you know. But even right. out of Israel, you had some that did receive him, you know. The elect, man, the chosen. Back then, hey, that, that the reincarnation in that, man, because the same people back then, or, or were reincarnated, all right, and they believe in the truth now, you know, like a pop, the twelve apostles. Well, Matthias, you know, with the twelve pop, with the rest of the eleven apostles, you know, they reincarnated. We don't know who they are, you know, but they're here. Um, you know, um, we know some, you know, may have some are in a spirit world for right now. They're still alive, just not here on the earth. Their body is in the grave. When Yahweh comes back, they'll be resurrected, going to the chariot with the rest of the elect. But um, they're here. They're back now, man. You know, they believed back then. Cause why? Because they were chosen. They were chosen. You know, that's that's the thing, man. Like, you can't just hop into the truth on your own. Nobody can. That's the thing people don't understand. Well, world people don't understand it. Nobody can do anything on their own, man. They can't, nobody can get anything on their own. Nobody can uh, really make anything on their own because all the Lord got to do is just allow your body to be, just like turn that ability off for you to even do like this. You can't do this. You know how many things it takes just to do this right here? Just to drive a car, you got to grip the steering wheel. Just to pick up a plate, you got to, you know, you got to do all that. So mm -hmm. being able to do that, hey, you, if, the most high is the one that controls all of that stuff, man. So nobody can do anything of their own. The face muscle for you to even lift your eyebrows, etc. Nobody can do nothing of their own. But the point, the main point I'm trying to get to right now is, you know, so if you can't do anything of your own, why do you think you could come, why would anybody think they could come into the truth on their own? You know, uh, this John chapter 6, verse 44, no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. You know? John, John 3 27 um, John answered and said a man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven you 
you know, so this truth given to the elect, you know, that's, that's, that's the uh, main point as well as it was, uh, what I was trying to say as well as they were back then, you know, and now the recart, they were back then believing the truth and reincarnated today. You know, it's a lot of people amongst Jake. You got those that believe in Yahweh Shad, and you got those over here doing this, those over here doing that. And if you get deeper into it, I'm not going to say too much on this part, but you get deeper into it, you know, you got people, different like sections, because back then, you know, they had people um, that were fighting against the Romans. You got Jake trying to get guns and stuff against uh, Esau now. You know, you got these false prophets around now. They had false prophets back then. You got to believe as Yahweh Shai, uh Around you had to believe you had the believers of Yahweh Shai back in the same spirits being reincarnated, man. You know, yeah, 70 yeah. AD was going on back then, it's gonna be worse than 70 AD now. Now it's gonna be Jacob's trouble, you know. So that was the point on that. Uh, Yahweh said, This generation shall not pass till all my words be fulfilled. Rough paraphrase. You got any, you got precepts or keep uh, uh black eyes. Isaiah 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men. We just read in Mark 8 and 31. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. So, yeah. A lot. You got that? Well. Basically, you know, the saying, you know, Yahweh Shai rejected a man, he was acquainted with grief, a man of sorrows, and, you know, we also share those same things while in the truth, you know, because it, it, there's going to be times that you laugh, yeah, but it's going to also be times that you may even cry at sometimes, you may, you may cry, you're going you're gonna to feel like, you're going to feel tribulation, you know, all sufferings with Yahweh Shai, and if you, didn't, if you endure all those sufferings to the end, be glorified with him. You know? But as Apostle Gabar was saying, um, you know, if you're of the elect, Lord willing we are, you know, we were those that esteemed him. You know, esteemed him back then. Uh, yes, yeah, so you were saying something? No, you hit the point on the target, Aki. You hit the point on the target, for sure. Acquainted with grief, you know, that's what I was going to really touch upon. Isaiah 53 and 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Yahweh, and afflicted. You know? So either you want to explain that point? Lucky. Right. He he bore our griefs upon him. Okay? Meaning what? You know, all of the stuff that we had to pay for, as far as with the Heavenly Father, all our sins. You know, our transgression, so on and so forth. Yahweh Shai borne it upon him when he died upon that cross, man. Okay? And it said right there, and carried our sorrows. Literally, man, when he carried that cross, man. You know? Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of the Most High, and afflicted. You know? Yeah. Okay? And you had some of our people, they just, you know, they, they made light of Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? Trump. You know that that and that's something right there, man. Like these same Jakes around, they like hey, these same Jakes around, man. They the ones that chose Barabbas over him. Same people, y'all chose Barat. Two thirds chose Barabbas. Wicked Israelites chose Barabbas over Yahweh Shai. That's just something right there. Yeah, it's gonna. It's actually gonna. Uh, this same chapter is gonna get into that. Um, verse 5 but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed that's talking about to Israel it's not talking about every nation man. you know and if, and if we're going to go a uh, level deeper it says by his stripes we are healed so this was really a prophecy about King Solomon being Yahweh Shah. 
Because when you go to 2 Samuel 7 and 14, the Lord said that when Solomon goes off, what is he going to do? He's going to correct him. He's going to chastise him with the rod of men and with the stripes of men, roughly paraphrasing. Solomon was never chastised with the stripes of men. Okay. So how? So when was Solomon ultimately chastised with stripes? When he came back as our Lord, Yahweh Shah. All right. You know, and also it says chastised when our peace was upon him. You know, Yahweh Shai made peace between Israel and Yahweh. You know, verse True. six. He's shallow. He's shallow, you know. Unto shallow, unto shallow shall the gap where the people be. You know, scriptures also talk about how Yahweh Shai broke down that middle, middle wall of partition, you know, which there was a middle wall of partition between the northern and the southern kingdom, or I guess the circumcision and the Israelite foreigners. And there was a middle wall of partition between Israel and the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai broke that down, man, and brought that unity all back to the spirit. You gotta understand, man. Yahweh Shai plays a very, very important part, man. You know, we know the most high Yahweh, man. He's over everything, everything. But Yahweh Shai, who was right under him, um, Yahweh Shai plays a very important part, man. Yahweh Shai was actually the first spirit created. You know, Revelation 3 and 14. Ooh. You know, Yahweh Shai was the first spirit created. Okay. And he, um, you know, Yahweh Shai was the first spirit created. Yahweh Shai was uh, multiple people, you know, well, at different reincarnations. All right. He was King Solomon. He's Yahweh Shai. Well, he, Yahweh Shai, you know, he's Yahweh Shai, is Yahweh Shai. You know, the Messiah, the Lamb of Yahweh, man, the Savior of the nation of Israel, the Lion of Judah. Okay. Uh, the word of Yahweh, you know, um, Hamashiach, you know, the Messiah, man, the anointed, you know, and then he died on the cross for the nation of Israel for their sins. He was that atonement, you know, and then Yahweh Shai, um, you know, he's he's coming back with he's gonna rule over the over the uh earth, you know. So Yahweh Shai plays a very important part, man. A very, very, and he's in the heavens right now, man. He still sees the stuff. He sees the stuff that goes on here, making intercession. You know, so he plays a very important part. Come, I have a precept. Come, is Isaiah chapter nine verse six? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. That's why going back to Isaiah 53 in verse 5, it says, The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He is the Prince of Peace, man. You know, and he brought peace between the nation of Israel and the Heavenly Father. So it's Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7, verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And Yahweh hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Right. Okay. We all like sheep have gone away. You know, Israel is like a scattered sheep, you know, not having a shepherd. All right. That's why Yahusha said he is the good shepherd. But but majority of our people, they have what? Hirelings, man. Okay. You even have hirelings in in the Israelite circumcision, you know, so on and so forth. Just like how you had back then in the ancient world, man, when our Lord was on the scene. And the point being what? We have turned everyone to his own way. You know, Jake, everyone there, they're, they're uh, unless you're the elect, all right, then Majority of Jake, they turn to their own way, man. They're trying to go establish their own righteousness and not submit to the righteousness of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. You know, but the Most High, through Yahweh Shai, it says right there, it says, laid on him the iniquity of us all because Yahweh Shai, he died for the nation of Israel. And I'm going to get the precept for it real quick, which there's many precepts for it, but I feel like this one is the most relevant due to the way the scripture is set up. Matthew 26. Starting at verse 28, it says, For this is my blood of the New Testament, 
which is shed for many for the remission of sins. That's the point. Right. Hey, just some, real, some edification on uh, verse 2 in Isaiah 53. Because for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, tender plant, you know, and he how shy as a baby. And as a root out of a dry ground, you know, meaning Yahweh Shai is an austere man and a Luke, that, well, no, a, a scripture that goes with that is in the book of Luke, chapter um, 19 and verse 28. And when he had this, hmm, fuck yeah, I mean, I think it's, hold on, bear with me one second. Okay, Luke 19 and 21. For I fear thee because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. You know? So that's what I mean, root out of a dry ground. So, you know, it means austere man. All right? And then we went to the part where, uh, we went, we went to the part, you know, where he had no form of comeliness. And we, we know what that part means. You know? Uh, all right, come on. That was that was that on uh, verse. Just wanted to get that part up in verse two. But um, Isaiah fifty three and seven. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened. So he opened not his mouth. That's actually, that's actually uh, that's actually self explanatory right there. As a matter of fact. You know, but uh, if you want to, you know, get a scripture on that. John 19 and verse 9. And went again, I'll start at verse 8. And when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. And went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Yahweh Shai, Whence art thou? But Yahweh Shai gave him no answer. Um, so that's the point. That was the prophecy being fulfilled right there. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Okay. Pontius Pilate is a part of those cheers, man. And I got another precept. If, the, if it's all right with you, are um, by me, by the show. Um, I believe it's in Lamentations 3. Lamentations 3, starting at verse 26, it says, It is Good for a man. Oh man, I'll start at 22. I'll start at 21. So like you. Lamentations 3 and 21. This I recall in my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. It is good for a man. It's good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It's good for a man that he bear up the yoke in his youth. Yeah, he's supposed to seek the Lord early, you know. Verse 28. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. He putteth his mouth in the dust. If so be, there may be hope. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled full with reproach, okay? And that's the, Yahushai was in that spirit, okay? You know, he uh, he put his tongue, he put his tongue into the dust, rough right paraphrasing, you know? Yahushai didn't speak, man, okay? A lot of times Yahushai didn't speak to Pontius Pilate. He just let them do what they had to do, you know? He said a couple words to him, but he didn't say much words, man, because the prophecy had to be fulfilled. But also even now, uh, in this truth, man, certain times, when you're around certain areas, you know, you want to speak out, but you don't say anything, man. Okay. You know, like you could be at work, for example, perfect example. You could be at work and you could be overhearing a conversation of someone doing some wicked shit. You know, you're hearing it at your job, you know, but you're at work and you know that there's nothing but worldly people around you who will not receive the truth. So what do you do? You just hold your peace, man. You put your tongue in the dust, roughly paraphrasing, you know, and you bear it upon you. It says, he giveth his cheek to uh, to him that smiteth him. You know, basically, you take the low. Sometimes you just take the low. 
you know, basically saying like, um, you know, he is filled with reproach. You know what I'm saying? Someone is entreating you evilly, you know, that they're, they're persecuting you, so to speak. You, you, you like, like you said, yeah, I I said, turn the other cheek in a way. Sometimes you just got to like deal with it and understand that we're not in our kingdom. So certain things we're just going to have to suffer through, you know, basically what, what the scripture is saying. That's the point. Um, Isaiah 53 and 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? His servants, the prophets. That's who, you know, who declares generation. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. Meaning, you know, Yahushua had died. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Verse 9. And he made his grave with the wicked. And with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. And that's a cut for hell. That's a cut for the hell doctrine. It says he made his grave with the wicked. Apparently, according to these people who believe in hell, you know, wicked people they go to hell when they die. So how come when Yahushua died, he went into the grave with the wicked? Does that mean Yahushua went to hell? <laughs> Yahusha technically did go to hell because hell simply means the grave or underground, you know, not a place where saints down there with a pitchfork and people are burning for eternity, man. Hey, to be honest, you, um, no, another cut to that, we're gonna cut to the hell doctrine, you know, you Christians out there, I'm gonna let these Christians go ahead, if they, you know, they're watching this, if they happen to watch this video, hey, Christians. Wicked, hey, guess what, Christian? Um, what's his name? King Saul didn't go to hell. <laughs> King Saul didn't go to hell, man. I'm gonna let you figure that out if you don't already know about it. But King Saul didn't go to hell, so where did he go? You know, this is Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 10. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him, he hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make, when thou shalt make his, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. You know? His soul was made an offering for sin. That's why that's why it says somewhere in Peter that Yahweh Shai was that sacrificial lamb or that lamb without spot or blemish. That was our Lord, man. Also, Revelation, the fifth chapter, it says, What? Thou art worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof, for thou was slain. And has redeemed us by thy blood, <laughs> you know. So Yahushua's soul was that sin offering, man. Okay, that's why we don't offer up, you know, carnal sacrifices, like it tells you in Hebrews the tenth chapter, because that won't make us perfect. But Yahushua's blood will. Hebrews chapter ten. So like, yeah, more. Now you got that. Hebrews chapter ten, starting in verse ten. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahweh Mashiach once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which could never take away sins. But this man, tell my Yahweh after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of Yahweh, from henceforth mm. expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Mm by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified whereof mm -hmm. the holy ghost is also witness to us for after that he had said before this is the covenant that i will make with them after those days say the lord open my laws to their hearts and in their minds will i write them and their sins and their in in iniquities will i remember no more now where remission of these is there is no more offering for sin Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter, the, enter into the holiest by the blood of Yahweh Shai, by a new and living way, which is con consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. Basically, that was the point, you know, really in um, verse 10, by the which will we are sanctified to the offering of the body of Yahweh Shai and Mashiach once for all. So Yahweh Shai was that sacrifice for our sins, you know. Which is why right. we don't, you know, we don't have to um, kill goats and stuff like that, man. You know, 
But um, yeah, this is Isaiah chapter 53, verse 11. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. So my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Right. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Come on. And that justify many, starting with the elect and ultimately for all Israel. Right. You know for he shall bear their iniquities, meaning that ha what happened when your house shall carry the cross. You know? Verse 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong because he had poured out his soul in, under death and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many. It made intercession for the transgressors. You know? It's like I got the precept for that part concerning he uh, was numbered with the transgressors. Going back earlier, how uh, the brother brought out how our people chose Barabbas over the Lord. That was the time of him being numbered with the transgressors. They That's why he said to him, that's why they said to Yahweh Shai, are you coming against thieves? with staves in your hand, you know? Are you coming against a thief with staves in your hand? Rough paraphrasing. You know, because he said, I taught daily in the temple by you. You know, you didn't do anything. Let me get that scripture real quick. All right, because basically when they rolled on your house, tried to arrest him, you know, he was like, it was basically as if they were rolling on a thief or a murderer. So that's basically him being numbered with the transgression. You know, kind of like how when Esau is going to roll on the men of the Lord, he's coming in with the SWAT team, da 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 da, da like, like we must be transgressors, you know. Lord willing, we be those men, you know, but rolling on the men of the Lord, like, like they're transgressors, like they're a bunch of wicked niggas, you know what I'm saying? This is uh, um, Matthew 26 and verse 47. It says, and why, and ver I'll start at verse 46, Matthew 26 and 46. Oh man, let me start at 45. Matthew 26 and 45. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed in the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that it same as he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Yahushai and said, Hail, master, and kissed him. And Yahushai said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Yahushai and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Yahushai stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Yahushai unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? Verse 55. And in that it says, In that same hour said Yahushai to the multitudes, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then the disciples, then all the disciples forsook him and fled. And I can have another precept, Salakia. This is Mark 14 and verse 48. Pretty much another one, really. But, um, Mark 14 and 48, it says, Now and Yahweh shall answer and send unto them, Are you come out against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you took me not, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Kind of like how we're on the highways and byways week in and week out, and they don't do anything on to us, man. You know, they don't really roll on us like they have. They're planning on rolling on the men of the Lord. Lord willing, we be part of that number, okay? Uh, in the times of trouble to come, you know what I'm saying? So basically, how is I saying, how come you come in with all this firepower, but you see me in the temple with you daily? You ain't, you weren't coming with that same energy, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a point on that right there. I mean, really, where it said, uh, therefore, I divide my portion with the great, you know, I got a scripture goal with that. 
Psalm 2 and 8, Ask of me and I shall give to the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. You know, so that's right. right there. You know, and Jake being wicked, you know, I wanted to say this. Um, remember, because brother, I was telling you last time, I was saying, Ask Stephen. You know, now I'm going to do a lesson on that, man. Ask Stephen. Basically, going how you Jake's, you with these wicked Jake's out here. This is Acts chapter 7. Uh, verse starting verse 51 he's stiff-necked and un matter of fact uh, uh can you get that one the scripture said oh jerusalem thou which killest Stop. this is acts chapter 7 starting in verse 51 he's stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears ye do always resist the holy ghost as your fathers did so do ye which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted and they have slain them which show before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. So Stephen is getting on these wicked jakes. It says, verse 53, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Now watch this, verse, verse 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of Yahweh, and Yahweh Shai standing on the right hand of Yahweh, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of Yahweh. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul, which laid, which you know was also, which um, his name was changed to Paul. Um, you know, which is Apostle Paul, you know, uh, verse 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon Yahweh and saying, Lord, Yahweh, shall I receive my spirit? And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. You see? Right. So Stephen was cutting him, man, but Jake... And the thing is, he was speaking right, man. He was speaking right. But as Amos 5 and 10 say, they hate him that rebuke in the gate or speaking it rightly. Um, you know? So. I got that. Matthew. Um, con, con, con. Matthew 23 and 37. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them, which they literally stoned Stephen, which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together? Even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Right. You know, like the Lord said, if all Israel was to pray to him, you know, the Lord would turn back our captivity. You know what I'm saying? The Lord and the scriptures also say that the most high wants to see us come to repentance, you know, so on and so forth, man. It's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. You know, the Heavenly Father, He gave Jake plenty of opportunities to stretch out his hand and for Jake to repent, but yet it says right there, it says. Um, and ye would not, you know, Jake doesn't consider that, man. Look at today, you know, same thing going on today, but Jake gonna know once they get in the kingdom, like that shame gonna hit him. That shame is gonna hit Jake, so man, in the kingdom, but they're gonna be righteous and perfect in the kingdom of heaven, you know, but they're gonna have that, 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 that um, remembrance of their, of their wrongdoings, you know. Everlasting shame and contempt. Ah, uh, you know. At one minute they was calling, you know, they were calling, you know, Yahweh Shai. You know, when he came on a donkey, they, you know, were giving him praise, things like that. Next thing you know, they turned around and crucified him. You know, Yahweh Yahweh Shai. Uh, Yahweh came to handle business, man. He came to he came to do the will of the Lord, and that was that. You know, Yahweh Shai, yeah, he'll enjoy himself in the kingdom and things like that, you know. But um, uh, you know, Yahweh Shai, um, he knows how wicked Jake is. You know, the Most High definitely knows how wicked Jake is. You know, um, man, that's something when your own people hand you over. You know, to Esau, man. It, it, I, check this out. Jake was being persecuted by Esau back then. And handed Yahweh Shai over to Esau, whom they were being persecuted by. So you two thirds, man. Ooh, you got a price to pay, man. Jacob's trouble. Hey, 
like Ezekiel 7, 3, say, Now is the end come upon thee, now I send my anger upon thee, and judge thee according to thy ways, and recompense, you know, upon thee all thy works, but, you know, roughly paraphrasing it. So, hey, amen. Lord gonna get you, the Lord about to get Jake for all their wickedness, even in all their past lifetimes, man. Now it's time for judgment. Just wait right. till all hell officially break loose. You know? I got one scripture I heard. Well, while, while I'm looking for it, uh, you can say what you're about to say. Sean, I was going to say, you know, scriptures say, you are of your father the devil, you know? And what did them, what did them same niggas say? We have no king but Caesar. So you got them same coon ass jigs coming back today, trusting in Egypt, ready, waiting for Esau to bring his vaccine, waiting for Esau to bring his chip, to bring the quote unquote problem solution. You know, you got them same ass niggas coming back, the same spirit. Exodus chapter 32, verse 9, and Yahweh said unto Moses, I have seen his people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. You know, and as the brother was just saying, hey, Jake is wicked, man. Look, this is Isaiah uh, 31 and 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. They stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many. Horse them because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel. They just seek Yahweh. Well, I'll show me how it was shot. You know, so Jake is wicked, man. They'd rather trust in man before the Lord who created man. That that tells you something about Jake, man. That tells you something about Jake. Esau can't give people spiritual power. Esau can't create a planet. Esau didn't create Yahweh Shai. Esau didn't feed Elijah. To, uh, the, 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 Esau didn't uh, command the ravens to uh, feed Elijah or direct Elijah where to uh, drink. Esau ain't do all that. So why would why this Jake stupid dumbasses, man? Like straight up. Jake deserve the wicked Israelites deserve that title. Stupid, dumbasses, sodish, uh adulterous. You know? Hey man, Jake deserve all them titles, man. You know? I think they're compared to as dross. You know, but um, yeah, I guess something else. Well, I was gonna try to find that scripture where it says that they are Sodish children. In Jeremiah, Jeremiah 422. say that again. Jeremiah four twenty-two. Oh, okay, God, the water. Jeremiah four and verse twenty-two. For my people is foolish; they have not known me. They are Sodish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Okay. Point on that right there, you know. Yo. Anything else? That's it, Aki. All right. So, yeah, with that, all, all the praise, honor, and glory belongs to Yahweh. Yahweh. That will honor the elders and apostles the way millstone that will well peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.